So the best way to show this is about taking out the paint box. Pull that up. That's the support for the jack, which is just a piece of wood. Some diamond plate and a piece of corner to keep it on the track. Because for me, I have a tight tolerance between the wheel well and the side of the box. Now on the side of the bottom that holds the toolbox, you can see the bearings there and these bolts are the ones that are underneath i'll try and get in there and show you and you can see it right there so i've got one two three four across the bottom to go into the side and five across the top for the weight going downward now the only reason i have this extra section here is because i needed this box to hold all my extra junk that doesn't fit in the drawers that are big items so for you if you're building it you might want to bring it just to the edge of wherever your box is and that's obviously going to dictate how wide your track system is for me the track system is 66 inches deep on my 08 ford f-150 and 47 inches wide so these pieces are 47 front and back and the side pieces are 66 inches left and right. All right, to make the sliding portion to run up and down the rail, take the bearing, and measure that. 22 millimeters. And we want it to stick out past the edge a little bit. So half of 22 is 11. So I'm going to go with 10. So take this down to 10 millimeters. Mark the inside. Flip it over. Same thing on the other side. I've already done it, so you'll see the line on the inside of both. I don't know if the rest of you guys are like me, but I can't find a sharp drill bit to save my life. Be right there. Alright, so when you're done, you're going to have holes running straight across your scribe line, which for us was 10 millimeters in on both sides. I don't know if you can see that line running directly across. Okay. Now, imagine that you're going to make a rectangle out of one and a quarter inch angle iron, which is going to be the bottom of your toolbox that the toolbox sits in. So, for a second, we're going to imagine as well that this is your toolbox. This is the bottom of your toolbox. It's going to sit inside a frame made out of this angle iron and we're going to want it to run up and down the tracks so we're going to take our bolts now this is just for demonstration purposes these are what i actually used one inch they might have a much flatter head so you're not losing as much clearance between the box and the side of your rail but these work too these are in the bottom as you saw in the video so we're just going to put these through the hole like so. 
make sure the washer that you use is a little bit smaller than the outside of your bearing otherwise it would defeat the purpose of having the bearing so we're going to put our washer on a bearing and a bolt Now I'm going to do that for all three of them. Now as you can see, these bolts are going through the inside. The bearings are on the outside. All right, so now you have these on. This is going to act as the right side. If you're looking from the back of the truck towards the front, this is the right side of your rectangle. So you're only having bearings on the right side and the left side. The pieces that are going from left to right have no need for a bearing. So now we're going to make pretend that this is the back of your truck. This is where the lift gate is. This is where the front is. Now one thing you want to keep in mind However long you make these, you want it to be two inches shy of what your bed is. So for me, it was 68 inches long. I made these 66. I needed an inch of clearance in the back and an inch of clearance in the front. And that is so that the, the string rope pulley mechanism that you use to release it has room to go freely without getting stuck. So now, here we are. Make pretend this is the right side. This is your truck, spot, truck box laying in there, and it easily slides back and forth. Now all the weight is obviously going down on these bolts. So you want to get a strong bolt. I use just the regular old bolts from Home Depot. My box is every bit of a few hundred pounds, if not more with all the tools that are in it, which is also good for the winter. But on the right side, you're going to have five of these sticking through the sides, one in the front, one in the back, three more spread out evenly across. Same thing on the bottom. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, obviously, is you want spacing between the sides and the bottom bolts so you don't run into an issue. If you tried to put one right here, obviously, you're not going to be able to, to tighten that down. So that's really the only thing you got to look out for. It's very simple. It works very effectively. I've had no issue. Uh, I've had it for about nine months now, um, so I'll keep you updated, let you know how it, how it works. Now the other thing I wanted to show you is, if you look, you can just see that extra millimeter or two that we left on purpose so that that sticks out. Same thing there. You can see they just stick over. Obviously you want these to stick out further than the face. Now here's that piece that I made just to show you how it goes. That would be this right side here. Or obviously the same on the left side here. And that's all that it takes to roll back and forth on both sides. Now also you'll notice that I have this set up on top of one inch square tubing, basically about five inches deep in the front, the middle, and the back. And that's only to allow for the clearance because these bearings and the bolts stick down below and would rub against the bottom of this. You don't necessarily have to use one inch. You could use anything to space it up in the air on whatever clearance that you need. Now the front latch, I made the same way I made everything else. I just took a piece of two inch wide flat metal, cut a little piece for the top, rounded the edges, bolted it through the side of the box on a roller bearing so it doesn't stick. So I can just lift that up. And you'll notice I put a spring at the bottom so when it comes back into contact 
it latches automatically. Like so. Now here we are on the back side of the toolbox. I got a hook there hanging to hold the bag. You'll see the holes for my first mistake when measuring. But here is the catch mechanism for when you slide it to the front of the vehicle. So I put bolts through here. I also put a piece of metal just like you see here on the inside. So when you bolt it through, it's not going through just the thin metal of the toolbox. Then I welded on a ear here for the latch, which is just a piece of, of uh, angle iron again. Rounded off the edges. And that is what attaches into here. All right, so here's the latch in the back side of the truck. Just a piece of angle iron with a piece on the side, you could just as easily use a piece of C-channel. All I did was take this shape that I drew out, cut that out of the same two inch stock flat that I used on everything else. The most important is that the front is curved. So when you push it back in, it pushes it up in the air and that the back is curved so as it lifts up, it doesn't catch. Three holes, one on the bottom for the spring, one on the top for the bolt, and one in the top left for the rope, as you'll see here. So the rope is coming up through here, comes out the back, goes up, back down, connects to the side of the piece. That way when you pull on this rope, the spring pulls it back down and this automatically latches. So if you were pushing a piece of metal, lifts it up, latches back down. The spring just goes right through the hole of the latch and then just a metal screw right into the back. Now the easiest way to get this rope through, the 66 inch long piece of metal was to tie it around a grocery store bag, shove it in the one end, stick a vacuum on the other, and then it'll pull it right through. Here's a close up of the back latch using, again, angle iron with a piece coming off the side for it to catch. Now on the sides, I did put another piece with a couple of holes drilled into it as some feet to be able to screw in to the floor of the truck. But I honestly, as you can see, don't have anything screwed through it because the weight holds it in place. So I have one there, one on that side, and one on each side of the front. There, which I do have a screw through. in there as well. Now as far as the mechanism to pull the latch open when you want to bring the toolbox back, you'll find this in the section where all the rope is at Home Depot. I just tied that around and then you can just simply pull it and the spring pulls it back and it sets out of the way. The reason this is curved up is because when you slide this all the way back, I didn't want it to catch on the bar. So I curved it up just a little bit to keep it from creating any force for when you're trying to pull the toolbox back to you. So you can see how easily just, what, five, ten, 16 ball bearings slides this few hundred pound toolbox easily with tools in it. 
So if it comes on, it's locked in. If you want to use the bed of your vehicle, lift up the latch. Push it in place. Put your pole back. Good to go. So now you have plenty of room to carry whatever you want to. If you didn't watch the first video, this is just an extra piece of metal on a magnet that pulls off. It goes through here and there. And I have a, a vise that connects to it. So you can just put that on. Just gives you an extra hand. And that's just held on with a magnetic cabinet lock from Home Depot. All the metal used was one inch square tubing and one and a quarter inch angle iron. I'll have a descriptions below for the bearings and any of the other items that I used that you can look at for reference. And obviously some diamond plate, but that's going to be specific on whether or not you want, you know, extra storage or depending on how big your, your toolbox is. As you can see, I got plenty of room under the tonneau cover. And by plenty, half of an inch, maybe an inch, but enough that it slides back and forth with no problem. All the tools are locked. I haven't had any issues with uh, condensation, water, anything like that as of yet. That could change in the future, but anything I keep back here runs that same risk. Bring the toolbox back. Pull out the arm. By the way, this is just a piece of conduit. The end is bent over, smashed with a hammer. And this is a rubber boot off of a $2 squeeze clamp from Harbor Freight. Thank you.